Title screen, Disability Rights North Carolina. Beth Garris Hardy, Adele Fosha Award for Lifetime Cross Disability Advocacy. A montage of people talking about Beth. She's just truly one of the most fascinating women I've ever met. Beth is very persistent in everything she does. She never let anything hold her back. When it comes to serving homeless children or any sort of vulnerable people, those with mental illness, um, she's a bulldog. A photo of Beth Garris Hardy. Beth Garris Hardy is uh, being honored because of her lifelong cross-disability advocacy. Vicki Smith, Disability Rights North Carolina Executive Director. So to really understand the full impact that Beth's advocacy has had, we really need to break down the different aspects of her disability advocacy. I think it starts with mental illness, and that's in part because it was very personal. Beth Garris Hardy. It's always a lovely thing when you find uh, through the cor throughout the course of life that your, your passion, your personal passions and your professional passions converge. And that's what's happened with me. A photo of Beth's brother, Kenneth. Our family uh, faced some pretty uh, difficult times as we learned uh, that my brother had been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Carol Matthew, former NAMI NC board member. Beth and her sister Phyllis have been a, a tag team for a long time in the advocacy world. A photo of Beth and her siblings. They've had a phrase through the years and um, Beth still uses this occasionally. It's called gentle pressure relentlessly applied. And um, that's probably the best motto for uh, her life that I can think of. We really became acutely aware of the fact that Kenneth was one of many, one of many individuals who uh, were being failed by uh, uh, a failed system. And so we, Phyllis and I, just kind of found our voice and started speaking up and started uh, looking beyond, you know, beyond our brother Kenneth to the larger, to the larger um, universe of, of people with mental illness. Beth was very good at educating people about um, the intricacies of funding for public mental health services in this state. A photo of Beth and her family. She's a master at laying out the personal background of her family and using it as a context to get the attention of people she's talking to. They might be mental health professionals, they might be legislators, um, anyone who works in that system. I served on the, the board of NAMI. The logo for NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness, North Carolina. And was um, president of the board during a, a time of transition. Gloria Harrison, NAMI NC Senior Helpline Trainer and Historian. We had a little uh, period without an executive director, so uh, she took a prominent role in our organization. She was almost our interim executive director, um, but of course she wasn't paid. We had our first NAMI walk. Photos of the 2015 NAMI NC walk. And that was in 2004, I think it was, and we had no idea if it was gonna take off, but it did indeed take off, and now it's an annual event that, that is, is very successful. So that's something I'm very proud of. We were primarily a family organization for family members, and she, Start reinvigorated our consumer council for peers, people with mental illness, and she was dogging in that. Pictures of Nami NC's anniversary quilt, which hangs on a wall. She and a friend of hers um, started the project of our anniversary quilt. So the quilt is here as a tribute to Beth. The second aspect of Beth's disability advocacy was grounded in her professional work. I um, started out as a regular classroom teacher and then it took me no time to, to recognize that I'm gravitating always toward the kids with special needs. And I wound up um, um, getting um, degrees in, in special education, a master's and and PhD in special education, and um, wound up struggling 
with to get people to understand the value of mainstreaming these kids inclusion of kids with special needs in in the regular classroom and uh, with some success and some failures you know I was part of efforts to uh, at the beginning of the inclusion efforts in in public schools she was a driving force in creating the National Center for Homeless Education. The logo for the National Center for Homeless Education. What we know now is homelessness is a traumatic event and trauma has great lifelong impact on the mental health of children. I wrote the grant and got the funding from the U.S. Department of Education to establish the, the National Center for Homeless Education. And that has grown to uh, to national prominence. Diana Bowman, former director of the National Center for Homeless Education. Beth has always been at the forefront of looking at um, the impact of, you know, effective things like um, trauma and hunger and health problems that are just, you know, so rampant among families that are poor and highly mobile and struggling just to survive day to day. Lisa Phillips, state coordinator of the NC Homeless Education Program. Besides her expertise in the field, just her own personality, the way that she uh, looked at our populations, our most vul vulnerable populations, uh, her, her commitment and guidance and how to not just communicate with them, but to support them in each arena that overlapped or intersected with homeless education. Vicki Smith. So the third part of her advocacy really is something that I can speak about personally. Um, Beth Hardy was one of the people who was on the board of CLA as I uh, became involved in uh, CLA becoming uh, the North Carolina Protection and Advocacy System. Carolina Legal Assistance, CLA, was the predecessor organization of Disability Rights North Carolina. Carolina Legal Assistance had filed a lawsuit called Thomas S. and it was to um, encourage the state of North Carolina to develop services, community-based services, for adults with complex needs like her brother. It was while I was on the board of um, CLA that I, you know, became just so invigorated by what can really happen in terms of systems change. Here's this little organization, this little group of attorneys who sued the state and they sued the state successfully. And that has, you know, resulted in just a tremendous uh, difference, at least for this group of people. A photo of Beth and Vicki Smith at a board meeting. Beth was chair for two years, a um, total of six years on the board, but it was during our early years, so she was really uh, helping our the formation, our foundation as a young agency. Kathy Boyd, former Disability Rights NC board member and director of the North Carolina chapter of the National Association of Social Workers. For Disability Rights North Carolina, she was a phenomenal board chair. She was one of those people who was incredibly intelligent, um, knew, knew the arena, knew the dynamics, knew the struggles, knew what it was like on the front lines. Beth saw the full potential of what an independent protection and advocacy system could have um, on changing the lives of people with disabilities in North Carolina and she was willing to step into a leadership role to help make that happen. This wasn't just her job, this wasn't her, her work or the way she made her living, this was really who she was and what she did as a person. I was, I was there during that process and during the rebranding, the renaming from Carolina Legal Assistance to Disability Rights North Carolina. That's when I met Adele Fosha. A photo of Adele Fosha. She and I um, became fast friends and um, we just worked together so well and she asked me if I would be willing to serve on the board, the first board of, of disability rights. and I. I was honored and I remain one of its most ardent supporters. A photo of Beth and Vicki Smith. I'll always revere the, the staff, the work that Disability Rights does, how over the 10 years um, they have grown as an organization. Just, it just amazes me. I'm just so proud to, to remain, you know, part of 
part of their team. Carol Matthew. She's an amazing woman, she's an amazing advocate, and she's a wonderful friend. And she is so deserving of this award. And I knew Adele Fosha. And it is so fitting that this award in her name is being given to Beth. Gloria Harrison. She seemed like a, a real Southern, gentle Southern lady. But then underneath that was a very determined person and a true advocate for persons with disabilities. You know, there are some people that you meet in life that um, have this kind of energy and advocacy that, that comes from deep inside of them. And she shimmers with it. And I think that Beth embodies everything that this award is supposed to be.